3,180 pounds, little Coleman 17 foot box bunkhouse coming in on trade here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Looks to be in dynamite shape. Probably doesn't hurt that this RV was kept stored under a full RV cover. And judging by the fact someone is willing to keep this thing stored under a cover, for which by the way, the cover is still included with this RV. You'll see it on the bunks inside. And like they added the little uh, larger folding entry handle. This looks to be something that was really well kept and I suspect probably like a starter camper for the previous owners and something that they decided okay we like this we definitely just want to get something a little bit bigger that's that's the uh, kind of the story that i'm putting together here and again overall looks to be pretty well kept um in, in case you're kind of curious you're like man i feel like i've seen another camper just like this coleman is what's called a private label um this is before the labels are attached it is literally just a dutchman aspen trail that has the Coleman badging so that it can be sold, quote, exclusively for one, you know, national chain. That doesn't make it better, doesn't make it worse. I'm just helping you understand what it is. This is an eight foot wide single axle camper. A lot of single axle campers are seven to seven and a half foot wide. So right here where you can see this corner camp queen with storage below, you can see that there's that big side stand next to it. That's because it's eight foot wide. That gives it a nice little place right here to, you know, kick your shoes off and whatnot. A little side stand up there, which I guess could be a headboard stand, could work as a nice little CPAP stand. A little bit wider means a little bit heavier, also means a little bit more of everything. For instance, we're going to get more storage as a result. And as we pan around, you'll also see this has a full four-person dinette versus a shrunken down kind of, you know, tiny dining situation. <laughs> tiny dining, I like that. So this has a side mount air conditioner, as you can see. Because it's small enough, it doesn't need a big super duper overpowered roof air unit. And that will actually help keep the weight, the cost, and the uh, overall exterior clearance height of the RV down where it's a little more manageable. Um, down below here, again, you can see how this is a, since it's an eight foot wide camper, they have room for a larger dinette. And I like that set of power outlets down there. Storage below the seating, the dinette can fold down into a bonus sleeper. And some brands will give you kind of like an open bunk wall here, like the, the Wolf Pups, the 16 BHS Wolf Pup, very similar, very popular here at Halet RV. The uh, top bunk won't be fully enclosed like this, but that does mean this has a nice entertainment wall. Previous owners look like they did have a TV installed in this wall at one point. The good news is, since they took it home, it gives you a very obvious place where you could uh, mount your own TV and not have to guess where to put the screws. You just kind of piggyback off what the previous owners did. Now, since this was a little bit wider, they had an opportunity to do something different here. You've got a normal single upper bunk, but you see how the bunk doesn't go all the way against the bathroom wall. That's where that extra width is coming into play. And down here, uh, where you see that's the full RV cover I mentioned before, but this is a little bit wider bunk. I call it like a big kid bed. And that makes kind of a Jack and Jill bunk situation, which also makes it very easy for the kiddos to climb themselves up to that upper bunk, which is very, very handy. Um, as I back up here, you can see how, th since they don't have a full-size fridge, like a six cubic foot two-door fridge, like say a Wolf Pup would or something like that here at Halet RV, it does leave them plenty of pantry space for lots of storage. Popping some of that open a little bit, give you a little bit of room to look at everything. Um, pretty conventional, you know, kitchen arrangement for a small single axle bunkhouse camper like this. That is a combination fridge freezer. There is a freezer drawer in the top of it. It is two way, both 110 park power electric as well as propane. So, uh, you know, it does give you like an off grid option. Your furnace is right there located below that pull out drawer. It looks like somebody did some very gentle modifications to it to kind of create like an extra little sort of prep shelf that can flip open to be a drawer below. Um, I don't believe that's factory, but it works well. It looks nice. It wasn't janky. It wasn't jury rigged. They did a good job of it. Then just beyond that is the camera adjust to the light variance. You can see how this does have excellent either pantry or linen or combination there of storage right next to that with the bathroom behind door number one. And popping that open, you're not going to see anything earth shattering or new or special or fancy. This is a simple series trailer and it just simply works. That's all it needs to do. Uh, foot flush stool right there. Notice an easy step in shower, not a travel trailer tub. And uh, we've got the uh, skylight above here giving us a little bit of extra headroom. Now this is a six and a half foot tall camper, which <laughs> I love the little poo emoji. <laughs> On the mirror over here, sorry. Uh, that's 
That's the perfect air freshener for this room. <laughs> At least I hope it's an air freshener. Oh, what was I saying? Oh my god. What was I saying? Oh, six and a half foot tall, normal standard height camper, so I can walk around in here normally. Um, and that skylight is going to help offset the little bit of height where you have to step up onto that shower pan. So a guy like me, I can stand with my head in the bubble, in the shower. I'm about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, by the way. Um, you know, for a quick little weekend military shower, you'd be fine. Now, you might notice there's no shower surround paneling on these walls. It's really not a big deal. All you do when you're done taking a shower, take your towel, wipe the walls down real quick so you don't see standing water on it, and, uh, you know, get the uh, vent open up here, let some airflow go. And you should be just fine. There's really no problems with bathrooms like this. Just a lot of negative perception. Now, I, we're the type of place, and I'm the type of guy, if I see something, I say something. And I'm not, I'm not even sure uh, what I just encountered is, is for real. Okay, so what I mean by this, because like you're like, what is he talking about, this idiot? Uh, right when you walk in the door, I don't know if there is a slight kind of springy spot in the floor or if it's just these super duper padded insoles on my shoes that I'm wearing right now. I don't know which one it is. Uh, my foot felt a little squish, but I wasn't able to like relocate it. So maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but I'd rather warn you and be wrong and have nothing wrong than not warn you and you show up and you go, you freaking snake, you are a lion sack of crap. There's a bad spot in this floor and you hit it from me. Well, I'm not gonna do that. So, if that's something you're kind of curious about, come check it out in person. We'll have our people walk through it. I could be wrong. Now, one of the things that this camper rock and rolls with is some serious uh, compartment storage here under the bed. Now, it is not a pass-through. It doesn't go all the way to the other side of the RV because that's where things like the water heater are located is under the headboard of the bed on the driver's side. But it gets the job done. I am noticing the double propane tanks and the uh, uh, hard shell enclosure on that. I, uh, that is not a standard feature on Coleman campers. This normally, the Coleman Lantern series is their uh, more basic entry level camper. It would normally have one propane tank. It looks like somebody has upgraded to dual propane tanks, and I suspect an auto changeover regulator. But at worst case scenario, if one tank runs empty, you just swap the regulator over. No big deal. So that is cool. This has 40 pounds of uh, 40 pounds of propane capacity. There we go. A lot of P's in that. A lot of alliteration. And um, as opposed to 20. Very nice. Tinted windows are something you don't always find in this class, and that is something that you'll appreciate on a hot summer day. It'll help keep a lot of that sunshine out, or if you got an annoying, nosy neighbor you don't have to worry about. Oh, tires. Let's look at the tires. I haven't looked at the tires. I'm not expecting anything scary here, but you never know. And in point of fact, tires look good. I don't see any weather checking or anything like that. The RV's new enough. I don't have to worry about aging out of tires. Those look ace. I don't see any issues there. Um... Backing up a little bit here. This does have a walkable roof, by the way. So if you do need to get up there for maintenance, cleaning, upkeep, you can. Uh, you might notice there's no ladder on the back of it. A lot of single axle campers just don't. But a lot of single axle campers, they're small enough. It's just, it's not that hard to have a ladder beside it and move the ladder once or twice on each side to get the RV clean. Now, if you're in like a big 40 foot fifth wheel, obviously that's a problem. That's why most of those tend to have ladders. It's just not necessarily as needed here. Um, that is a power awning also, which not all little trailers in this class have. Most of the ones uh, sold here at Halet RV will. That's an interesting place for this. The uh, side mount solar prep plug, which is a neat little feature here if you want to get off grid and keep your batteries, you know, just kind of touched up. It's in the back of the RV. That's an unusual location for those. It doesn't, it's not a bad location for it by any means. It's just not a normal location for it. So the skin looks good, tires, decals, everything looks good. I'm not really seeing anything that scares me, ladies and gentlemen. If you are uh, not interested in a pop-up, you got a limited tow capacity, or you're just looking for something small, simple, maybe your first RV, you want to try camping before you go neck deep into a brand new one, this would be a nice little kind of starter or hard shell alternative to a, a, a pop-up, basically. And being in the used market, price is going to be right on it. So, give us a call here at Halet RV. We don't do dealer fees, but hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything between, we do it all. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.